Back when I started my game dev journey, I was really interested in graphics programming, the art of placing millions of squares on screen to create an image. Ever since I had learned how to draw an image on screen with frameworks such as SDL2, I experimented with trying to make 3D graphics with OpenGL and DirectX. However, I didn't have the knowledge of matrices and other sorts of programming and mathematical knowledge to even understand how to do such things. So instead, I created things such as a 3D software rasterizer and raycasting 3D games by following tutorials online. One time I found this really cool kind of 2.5D rendering that simulates someone taking steps in a maze. I think it was a game called Maze War. I immediately became intrigued at how with simple math, someone was able to simulate a pseudo 3D maze world. So I searched and searched online until I found this guy called Leo Ono who had made a version of this type of rendering in Java and Swing. Definitely check him out. He still posts videos about awesome projects and it's incredible how many amazing projects he's made and how underrated he is. At the time, I wanted to make a game with that sort of rendering as a dungeon crawler, but I didn't have enough knowledge or skills that I do now of game development and programming required to do it. So today I'm going to be making a 2.5D dungeon crawler game with that sort of rendering, and I'm going to be making it in the command prompt with Javadex 9's OC console game engine, which simulates graphics in the command prompt. I want to make it in the OC console game engine because it would be a lot more fun than just making it in a regular graphics API, and it would give it a unique sort of look. So I actually found the code that I converted from Leo Ono to STL2 and C++. Here I'm just going to show you how far I have gone with it in the past, and I'm not going to go too far in depth about how this rendering actually works. For that you can go to this GitHub link in the description which shows the original code that Leo Ono made to render this maze in Java. So to start off, we have to switch from SDL2 to OC console game engine so that we can make this game in the console. So I wrapped all my code into a game class which the OC console game engine requires you to do and changed from a never ending while loop into the on user update function in the console game engine. After that all I did was change the drawing functions and the game was fully on the console now. Making this game in the console means we can utilize various fun effects that can make the game more stylized and text based. First off we have the normal solid pixel style. Next we have this quarter shaded pixel. Next we have the half shaded pixel. And finally we have the three quarter shaded pixel. And you can even have the screen being drawn by a text character of your choosing such as this at character. The beauty of this in my opinion is that because the graphics are text based, they render super fast. You would never be able to run at this speed if you were drawing a sprite for each pixel on screen in something like SDL2. You might be able to get this result with a fast GPU and some shader work but I've actually tried that with the OpenGL version of the console game engine and it was nowhere near the speed that the normal console game engine was running at. I just think that all the pixels you're seeing on screen is really just text. I decided to go for the solid pixel for now because I wasn't ready to decide the style of the game this early on. The first thing I did was add in a map so that I could visualize the map in its entirety. This was really easy to do because we were in a command prompt. To draw text is really easy and we don't need to worry about the complicated reality of drawing text in other graphics APIs. Using the draw string function I was able to create a map in the corner of the screen. The next thing I wanted to add was the ability to render an entity based on its position in the maze. To start off I created an assi sprite class that read in a string and based on the width and height two dimensionalizes the string and draws it on screen. Here's the result. It's a spider if you can tell. For some reason I feel like it's easier to make sprites this way than through pixel art programs such as A-Sprite because the text already does so much for the art that you don't need to worry about, such as color and different shapes. Now the difference between my assay sprite render and one that I would probably have invented in the past is that mine is scalable. No matter how big you want to draw the sprite, I wrote some sampling code that made it so that you could draw the sprite at that size. Now granted it looks very strange when you try to scale a very low resolution sprite to extreme resolutions and it would probably look strange if a high res sprite was scaled to low res too. It just looks like huge blocks of characters instead of what it's meant to look like at its 1 to 1 ratio. Next I wrote some code that stuck the spider to the wall that you are facing to get a fake depth effect. Now as you'll notice the spider is following me around wherever I go which is incorrect and something that we don't want. So I checked to see if the player was facing the spider and if they were then render it. Now it looks much more natural. Another thing I wanted to do is make the spider scale along with how far the player is from the spider. So to do this, I found the distance between the player and the enemy and subtracted a few pixels every time the distance got bigger. Now as you can see, there is much more mystery and realism to the game now. You can't tell what the enemy is, but you know that it is there. 
It might not even be an enemy. It could be an item pickup or something that you have to get close to see it. The next thing I did was make it so that you could have more than one enemy because it would be pretty boring if there was only one enemy and you won once you killed it. So in order to do that I made a vector that contained all the enemy instances. Now as you can see I'm turning each corner and there is an enemy in every corner. Another thing you'll notice is that I made it so you can see the enemies on the map as a fun debug feature. I might make the map purchasable from the shop if I have time. One thing that I fixed after this was the ability to see enemies through walls. I hadn't made a check yet to see if an enemy was visible collision wise, but now as you can see I can no longer see any enemies through walls. Now that I got the rendering system down it was time to make a combat system to actually add some gameplay into the game. So the first thing I did was make it so that when the enemy moves to an enemy it freezes the player and doesn't let it move anymore. Next I added a health bar for the player and the enemy to display how much health the enemy has and how much you have. I found this outline square character online to make the health bar look cooler. I was even able to make the health bar change color so for the player it was white but the enemy had a red health bar. I made it so that every 10 health was one character on the screen. Next I needed to add controls to attack so I made it so that when you press the space bar an attack animation would play. Finally I updated the health bar according to the attack damage of you and your enemy and added a prompt on screen asking if you wanted to play again if you lost. And you can see that instead of using the solid pixel option for drawing the background of the losing screen, I used the half pixel option. And for a losing screen or any UI menu it looked kind of neat, another benefit of using the console for your games. Now the game was feeling a bit unbeatable. Since your health didn't magically regenerate it was impossible to move forward once you killed a certain amount of enemies. So to make the game actually playable, I thought it was time to implement some sort of healing system. So to do this I created a few healing gurus around the map that will heal your wounds if you give them a certain amount of money from killing enemies. I'll probably add the ability for them to do other things too but for now the only thing they do is heal you. So after this I got started on making the maze procedurally generated. I didn't want to prepare hundreds of maps using this sort of maze creation implementation and procedurally generating the map would allow for a much greater size and greater detail. So to do this, I used one of the easiest maze generation algorithms called the binary tree algorithm. Coincidentally, because of how simple and easy it is to implement it, it is also the fastest maze generation algorithm, although the mazes it generates can feel a bit boring. It basically randomly chooses whether to make a passage down or right every cell it visits and in doing so creates a maze. Now that I had generated a maze, I needed to randomly generate enemies and healing throughout the maze. To do this, I did a scan through the entire maze and when I detected a corner, I first randomly decided whether there was going to be anything there. We wouldn't want there to be too much action going on inside the maze and make the game clustered. Next, I randomly decided whether there was going to be an enemy or a healing item there and placed one of the two objects accordingly. Now that we had a way to reliably generate mazes, it was time to actually use it in the game. I detected whenever the player went out of bounds of the maze and when they did this, this was an indication that they had found a way out of the maze. As such, I generated a new maze when this event occurred and basically reset the game. Now we had a relatively playable but boring game. In this video, we created a simple dungeon crawler game out of an interesting rendering concept. If you enjoyed these kind of videos, make sure to hit the like button and maybe subscribe. I might make these kinds of videos into a series where we explore interesting programming or game development concepts. Until then, see you all next time.